Yay, you're finally making the move to Metro Phoenix, but eh, do you move to Scottsdale or do you move to Fountain Hills? Now, your friends are going to tell you they're basically the same, but your friends would be wrong. <laughs> there is a big difference between the two communities. Join me as we find out what those differences are and which community might be right for you. Hey, I'm Mike Son with Metro Phoenix Living at eXp Realty. And if you like what you see in this video, drop a comment in the comment section down below and let us know which community or communities you'd like us to feature in upcoming videos. We just might do it. You never know. So let's get started. We're going to begin by talking about cost of living briefly. In short, both communities are expensive, but well worth it. We will then explore entertainment in both communities, shopping options, golf, schools, traffic, and finally, housing. And when we're finished, you'll know exactly which community is the best fit for you. Let's talk about the cost of living. In both communities, it's not cheap. In Scottsdale, you'll pay $300,000 to $330,000 for a condo under 1,000 square feet. That same condo in Fountain Hills will cost you about $250,000 or more. Single family homes in Scottsdale start at about half a million and it's a very good chance you won't like them at that price. But on the other hand, homes in Fountain Hills starting at about 500 million as well, but these are much nicer for the money. So overall, you're gonna find the cost of housing in Fountain Hills somewhat lower than Scottsdale, but there are no bargains to be had in either town. Now let's look at entertainment. Scottsdale is an entertainment mecca. It's a tourist town after all, so there's no shortage of things to do. The centerpiece of Scottsdale is Old Town, and here you're going to find an eclectic mix of galleries, restaurants, shops, and yes, even wine tasting. My favorite. It's an amazing place to spend a day or even a couple of days. And just north of Old Town, you'll find the Scottsdale waterfront. And yes, I did say waterfront and Scottsdale in the same sentence. You see, Phoenix is crisscrossed by a bunch of canals, and Scottsdale has taken one section of this canal, turned it into an amazing waterfront live, work, play area. Condos here are likely to be half a million plus, but just outside your door, you have restaurants, bars, shops, possibly even your work. And you can always go for a nice stroll or a bike ride along the canal. There's many trails. Now, just north of the waterfront, you'll find Scottsdale Fashion Square, a three-story mall that actually extends over Camelback Road to the south side of the road by a covered walkway and shops. So the mall is actually on both sides of the road in one building. Here you can find Tiffany, Gucci, Prada, Balenciaga, or just a slice of pizza. In other words, there's something for everyone. Now, as far as restaurants go, like I said, it's a tourist town. You can get everything from a scoop of ice cream at the Sugar Shack, I recommend it, to a five-star gourmet meal at one of the many resorts in town or one of the many fine dining establishments like Mancuso's or Bourbon and Bones. But if dining and shopping aren't your thing, perhaps sports are. There are two spring training facilities for Major League Baseball in Scottsdale. There's Scottsdale Stadium and Stalt River Fields, and you'll find the San Francisco Giants at the Scottsdale Stadium. And the Colorado Rockies and Arizona Diamondbacks are at the Salt River Fields. This might even be one of the few places you can get a bargain in Scottsdale because you can watch Major League Baseball at a fraction of the regular season prices. It draws people from around the country. And then there is golf. We can't forget golf. With approximately 100 courses near Scottsdale, it's no wonder Scottsdale is known as a world-class golf destination. So whether you're looking at the boulders in North Scottsdale, Camelback Golf Club in Central Scottsdale, Desert Canyon Golf Club, Eagle Mountain, Ganey Ranch, or even the Tournament Players Club where the PGA turns out every year, you can find what you're looking for. There's both public and private courses available in Scottsdale. But now let's take a look at Fountain Hills. Unlike Scottsdale, Fountain Hills is not known as an entertainment mecca. It's not really a tourist destination, and as you can see here from the video, there's shopping in Fountain Hills, and you'll find a few small galleries, but there will be nothing to rival Old Town Scottsdale. And while there's not a waterfront as we discussed in Scottsdale, Fountain Hills is home to the world's largest fountain. Just take a look. You're going to see this. You're going to love this beauty. It's absolutely gorgeous. At its full height of 560 feet, the fountain in the center of Fountain Hills is higher than the Washington Monument. It's 10 feet higher than the Notre Dame Cathedral. It's 110 feet higher than the Great Pyramid in Egypt. And it's three times as high as Old Faithful in Yellowstone. It's absolutely gorgeous. But if you're looking for a day of high-end shopping nearby, well, you just have to go to Scottsdale. There are no malls in Fountain Hills, strictly strip malls and a few shops in the downtown area. 
But if you want sports, you're going to be going to Scottsdale as well. There are no stadiums in Fountain Hills. There is plenty of hiking along the nearby McDowell Mountain Regional Park. And if you like casinos, just you're just a few miles from the Fort McDowell Casino on Beeline Highway. Although to be fair, Scottsdale has two casinos of its own if you do like to gamble. By the way, if you like what you see in this video, then you found a home. We post regular content here every week. So make sure you hit that like, subscribe and notification bell so that you never miss another video. Let's keep going. Now let's compare the golf options in Fountain Hills compared to Scottsdale. We can't forget golf. <laughs> if you're an avid golfer, Scottsdale is going to be the town for you. Fountain Hills does have five golf courses, including the very exclusive Fire Rock Country Club shown here, with million dollar and multi-million dollar homes nestled among the mountains and with the golf course kind of woven in between. It's an absolutely beautiful place, but it's priced accordingly. Like I said, the homes are multi-million dollars and expect to pay a twenty-five dollars to $50,000 initiation fee to get started at the club. And as I said, beyond that, there are four other courses. And to be fair, the golf courses in Scottsdale aren't that far away. The towns are only separated by a couple of miles. So if entertainment is your thing, dining, dancing, shopping, art galleries, sports, Scottsdale is going to be your place. If you're more into views, hills, and a more quiet lifestyle, you're probably going to prefer Fountain Hills. So now let's take a look at the location of the two communities. As you can see here on the screen, Scottsdale is a very long, thin community. It stretches all the way from Cave Creek up here, all the way south, all the way down to Tempe. So it's quite a way distance north to south. It's a relatively thin city, however. Fountain Hills, on the other hand, is located just to the east of Scottsdale. Uh, separated by a mile or two of, of, of roadway, not very far, basically going through a mountain pass. And um, if you're driving, you know, if, if you're going to be working in downtown Phoenix and you want to buy a home in North Scottsdale, be prepared for a very long commute. As you can see, you're going all the way from up here at Carefree Cave Creek area, all the way down here to the Phoenix area. And at least half of that is on surface streets. Whereas if you're in Fountain Hills, so, you're going to be looking at an equivalent distance going from Fountain Hills through the surface streets down here, down the freeway across and into Phoenix. You're going to have a similar commute between Fountain Hills and North Scottsdale. But that said, if you buy a home in Central Scottsdale or South Scottsdale, as you can see, it's a very relatively short distance between South Scottsdale or Central Scottsdale and here in Phoenix. Now, the one advantage that Fountain Hills does have over Scottsdale is you are a good proximity to the uh, entertainment of having a national forest an hour away. You are literally one hour's drive from Fountain Hills all the way up here to Payson, where you're going to have pine trees and generally temperatures about 20 degrees cooler than you have here in the valley. So that's one advantage you have. The other advantage you have in Scottsdale, however, is you're closer to the freeway if you want to head north up to the Flagstaff area, or if you want to head into other parts of central Phoenix. So in, some, in summary, it just kind of depends on what you're looking for as far as location goes. If you're going to be working in downtown Phoenix, you're going to want to be in south or central Scottsdale. If you're going to be working in Scottsdale, you can be in either Scottsdale or Fountain Hills. If you're going to be working in Mesa down in this area, you might want to consider either one of these communities. Either way, you're going to have easy access to the Mesa Tempe area from either Scottsdale or Fountain Hills. So having looked at entertainment, golf, sports, dining and location, let's take a quick look at schools in the two communities. Just in case your family includes some of the under 18 crowd, let's begin with Scottsdale. So Scottsdale Public Schools have an average math proficiency score of about 63% versus the average of Arizona Public Schools, which is 45%. Their reading proficiency scores are 64% versus a 45% statewide average. Overall, schools in Scottsdale have a ranking of 10 out of 10, which puts them in the top 5% of Arizona Public Schools. You can compare that to Fountain Hills, which has four public schools serving 1,300 students. The district's average ranking in Fountain Hills is 8 out of 10, so it's lower than Scottsdale's rating. Nonetheless, it does put Fountain Hills in, in the top 30% of schools of Arizona. Not too shabby, just not as good as Scottsdale's. 
So if education is most important to you and your family, you'll probably prefer Scottsdale over Fountain Hills. The one thing to note about Arizona is that it's a school choice state. That means you'll be able to send your children to public schools at no charge, but you can also send them to any number of private charter schools at no charge. That's right. The state will pay for your children's private charter school education in Arizona. Now, it has to be a charter school, not just a private school, but you'll have plenty of twos to choose from with a wide variety of them, uh, lots of specialties and reputations. The only downside to the charter school route is you'll have to provide transportation for your children to and from school. They almost never have their own bus route. That said, you can get a private type school education for free. I like free. Scottsdale has a great number of charter schools, including Basis High School. It's nationally recognized as one of the best high schools in the nation. On the other hand, in Fountain Hills, there's a couple of small charter schools, but nothing significant. So again, as far as education goes, advantage goes to Scottsdale. Now, something that's very near and dear to everybody's heart, traffic. In this category, I'm just going to say it up front, Fountain Hills has Scottsdale beat hands down. The average traffic count along a major thoroughfare in Scottsdale, such as Scottsdale Road, can be as much as 20 to 70,000 cars per day. Contrast that to Fountain Hills, where the major thoroughfare is Shea Boulevard. Shea Boulevard has between 6 and 12,000 cars per day, so you're much more likely to run into traffic congestion and delays in Scottsdale than you are in Fountain Hills. The traffic congestion is worse in Scottsdale in the Old Town area, as you might expect, and it becomes less as you go into North Scottsdale towards Carefree. Even there, however, traffic counts tend to be higher than in Fountain Hills. So if traffic makes you pull your hair out, you're probably going to prefer Fountain Hills over Scottsdale. And last but certainly not least, let's talk a bit about home prices. Because let's face it, that's the bottom line. Let's first talk about condos. In Scottsdale, about 90% of them are going to be between 300,000 up to 1.3 million. Still, about half the condos in Scottsdale are going to be under 500,000. In Fountain Hills, however, they'll range from about 250 up to about a million dollars in the exclusive Adaro Canyon area. About half the condos here though are going to be under 400,000. So as far as condos goes, the advantage goes slightly to Fountain Hills. But looking at single family homes in Scottsdale, you almost have to divide the town into three areas. You have South Scottsdale where you can expect to pay 450 to a million dollars. This is an area as you can see from the video of older homes, most of which have been completely remodeled. You wouldn't recognize them on the inside. The lower priced homes in this area, however, probably have some remodeling left to do or perhaps have not been remodeled at all. Ugh. Then you have Central Scottsdale, which extends north and south from Old Town. And in this area, you can expect to spend about 550 to $5 million for a single family home. The closer to Old Town in general, prices go up. Any mountain areas in here, they're also higher. This includes home in the Greenbelt area shown here, such as McCormick Ranch and Ganey Ranch. Ganey Ranch will be the most expensive of the two. And farther north, we have North Scottsdale, where homes range from a low of 600,000 for smaller ones up to $32 million for the most extravagant estates. As you can see from the video here, homes in this area tend to be on larger lots, typically on an acre or more. There's some beautiful mountainside and hillside homes too. In Scottsdale, you can really get whatever you're looking for. There's homes on exclusive golf courses, homes bordering the mountain preserve, waterfront homes, and as I said, mountainside estates. Alternatively, in Fountain Hills, homes range from approximately 600,000 up to $7 million. There are some older homes that are ranch style in the 2,000 square foot range that run in the half million dollar plus or minus price point. These typically won't have much of a view though, but they'll be nice homes. As you go up in the ladder in price, you'll see some homes such as these that are situated on the many hilltop and ridgetops throughout Fountain Hills, offering panoramic views of the surrounding community and the mountains. And like Scottsdale, you can get homes bordering a mountain preserve on the golf course or even mountainside. There is no waterfront home in Scottsdale or Fountain Hills, however. So if you're looking for waterfront, you're going to have to stick with Scottsdale. So as far as homes and pricing goes, the advantage goes slightly to Fountain Hills. On the other hand, if you're looking for the highest quality estate homes, you may prefer Scottsdale as it's going to offer larger homes and more choices at even the highest price points for those that can afford the very, very best. 
On the whole, however, Fountain Hills is going to be the more affordable of the two communities. So in summary, if you're looking to maximize your entertainment options, or you're looking for a home on the water, you want an easier commute to Phoenix, or you're looking for very high-end luxury homes, Scottsdale will probably be your best place, unless you just simply can't stand traffic. On the other hand, Fountain Hills is going to offer you a quieter lifestyle, but with many fewer entertainment and golf options than you would have in Scottsdale. You will have a lot less traffic and your homes will be a little less expensive and you'll be closer to the mountains and pines. But if you're spending $600,000 to a million dollars plus, you can still get some beautiful views throughout this community. And remember, if you're looking for to commute into Phoenix, it will be a significantly longer drive from Fountain Hill Zone. So I truly hope you enjoyed this video. As I said at the beginning, there's a big difference between these two communities. If you have more questions about which community would be best for you, please book a call with me in the Calendly link down below, where you can pick the time and the day where it's best for us to talk. Otherwise, explore the homes that are available in the area right here at our website. It's the number one search site in the Valley. We update it every five minutes, so you get the most current listings available to the public. So thanks very much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.